Tablet sales look to maintain a huge growth trend. The tablet wars are officially on. Who will win? Shipment orders for tablet technology is suffering from its first annual decline. Tablets. Are they dead? They're back. This year's CES, it's all about tablets. Global tablet shipments increasing rapidly year on year in Q1. It's highest since 2013, up more than 50% since 2020. If you're like me, you've been paying attention to the growing chorus of excitement on tablets and wondering what you should make of it all. To put it another way, I'm 20% skeptical that I've heard this before, 40% hopeful and eager about the promise of tablets, and the rest is pragmatic, that I know I've got a lot of other things on my priority list and not sure what to tackle first. So to help make sense of it all, I spoke with Rich Miner, a co-founder of Android who helped set Android on its massive growth and who has rejoined the team as the CTO of tablets. I started by asking Rich how we should understand this recent growth in tablets set against the arc of Android and mobile in general. So a lot of people are asking what's different with tablets this time around. And to answer that, it's good to go back in history. We launched the first Android tablet version in 2011 and tablets actually took off. And the usage that drove that uptake was largely consumption. And tablets without much investment were good for consumption. The media players, the YouTubes and other apps worked quite well just to scale up that video on a larger screen. And it stayed that way for a long period of time and the tablet growth kind of stagnated. And what started to shift was um, around 2019, uh, tablet screens were getting larger, keyboard attach rates were getting much higher, um, and you started to have some improvements starting to ripple through. Certainly our third parties were doing a great job of investing in tablets. So that shift happened with COVID, right? A lot of people thought that that shift of tablet growth happened uh, at COVID, and COVID was certainly an accelerant. The belief is that tablets started to be just much better for things beyond consumption and were being used for creativity and productivity. And there was a need for more screens and devices to support that, and just turns out tablets were very capable, less expensive than a laptop, still with the benefit of portability and moving around, especially if you have multiple people in one house trying to do different things. But if you really, again, look into the data, what you see was pre-COVID, in the second half of 2019, tablet sales, especially in the larger size, larger screen tablet sales, started to take off. And to help prepare for some of these new experiences, Android started working on 12L, purpose-built for large screens. I talked with product manager Andrea Zanakis to understand some of the principles behind this work. I started by asking Andrea what some of the unique challenges are for designing for large screens. So for each surface in the operating system, we needed to ensure that it could scale nicely to both foldables and tablets for both landscape and portrait orientations. So what are some of the unique use cases that large screens enable? We've heard from users that one of the core reasons they use large screens is to be more productive and multitask. So we built the taskbar to make it easy to switch between your most used apps or to drag an app into split screen to view two apps side by side. So say if you're writing an email and also doing research in a browser window, or if you're comparison shopping with two Chrome windows. And what do you think the future of large screens will look like? So as the technology continues to evolve, I see these various device categories converging. So tablets becoming more like laptops when you attach a keyboard, or phones turning into a tablet with foldables. Back to Rich. Given his long-term perspective with Android, I wanted to understand what the future looks like in the tablet space. So what's going to happen post-COVID? Is that growth going to still continue? And, and if you ask me, uh, you know, my thesis is absolutely yes. Uh, if you take a look at, at 2020, you'll see that tablet usage or tablet purchases actually started to approach the, the number of laptops that were shipped. So you have tablet shipments and laptop shipments getting very close. I actually think that there's going to be a crossover point at some point in the not too distant future where there are more tablets sold annually than there are laptops. And I think once you cross over that point, you're not going to be coming back. And so what should devs do to prepare? Uh, I think there's two things. One, you know, for developers, we ask you take a look at your app, take a look at the services that we're providing, Jetpack libraries to support larger screen, uh, and just see how your app might be reconfigured to take advantage of the additional screen real estate on a larger screen. But the other thing, and something I'm kind of more excited about, is if tablets really are going to become this new device for people to be creative and productive, right, what new apps would take advantage of people who may be doing things stylus enabled, you know, out of the gate? What does that mean for the mobility that you have with a tablet that you don't even quite have with a laptop? Back in the early days of Android mobile, 
We talked a lot about first people brought their apps to the mobile phones, and then they realized that wasn't quite right. You needed to develop for mobile first. I actually think there's going to be another wave of apps here that are thinking tablet first, right? What can I do with that larger screen that maybe I couldn't easily do with something that was physically connected to a keyboard? And I'm excited to see what, what great ideas come from, from developers as they start to think that. Thanks so much, Rich, for helping us understand this growth and for what it means for developers when it comes to tablets.